Power 7 Podcast. Good morning. Once again, it's your boy, the almighty Nicodemus. Back in the building once again. Power 7 Podcast. Coming to you live and direct on another beautiful, blessed morning. And like I always say, you got two arms, two legs, one head. It's always a blessing to get up out here and make it happen for you and yours. Whether you like doing what you do or not, remember, it's always a blessing because many people aren't able to even do that much. So once again, it's the Power 7 Podcast, and today's topic, not much, just nothing that triggered me over the past week or so that I can really get into, but that I have to discuss today. However, I did see something when people try to ask, this LL Cool J is LL Cool J considered a great lyricist? And, you know, you have mixed reviews, but mainly, mainly positive. There's always the, there's always the people that gotta be, gotta be different. <laughs> you know, I can, I can understand that at times. If you listen, you know, I've said, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit of a contrarian myself. So I get it, but come on now. It is the thing. Yes, LL is lyrical. LL is very important to hip hop. You know, many people already know LL is really the first, first solo hip hop star, uh, the first hip hop sex symbol, all of those things, right? The first rapper who had longevity because most MCs that came out around with LL had an expiration date, they only lasted for so long. Whereas Cool J come out of 84 and he was still able to stay relevant and put out tracks, hits, hit records, and, you know, lyrically hang with some of the guys out there into the 2000s. So to say that anyone, any of those naysayers saying that LL isn't lyrical, you just trying to be different just to be different, or dare I say, you don't know anything about hip hop, period, and you just running your mouth just to run your mouth, and you figure because he's old or he was before your time that he's not lyrical, he's not a lyrical monster, he's not that guy. I'm here to tell you, LL is that dude. And the thing about L, I would describe him as the bridge, and the reason I say he's the bridge because there is a saying that there's a trinity in hip hop, right? And the godfathers of lyricism are Kool Mo D, Grandmaster Melly Mel, and Grandmaster Cass. Now these three are described as the guys who are responsible or who laid the foundation for what hip hop heads like to call lyricists. And you know, if you know the story, Run DMC is kind of like the new school because, you know, they take the look from the street and brought it on TV. And they also took the beat from the street and brought it to the masses. Whereas, you know, those early guys, when they, were make, when they first started making records, like I said, I know you've heard the story. Those early guys first started making records. They, you know, made records with bands and bands paying inter, inter, uh, interpretations no, I'm not, I'm not saying the correct word, but they were playing like interpretations of some of the disco music, you know, and they'd play their verses and the guys would rap on it, whereas, you know, Run DMC actually came out rapping to the breaks. You know, they weren't rapping with a band. They had, they used, they, they had just the hard beats. They stripped it down and it sounded more like what they were doing in the clubs and in the, in the parks. And that's what Run DMC's contribution was, which is a major contribution. However, lyrically, Run DMC was still kind of, they were still kind of from that school in a sense with their rhyming styles. You know, they were, they weren't elite lyricists. They, you know, some might argue that they weren't even better than OD, Mel, or Cass. So they weren't really lyrical monsters. But the guy who was, who kind of took with, the training was doing the Mel and Cass and kind of took what they were doing and advanced it first before Rock Hill 
was LL Cool J. LL Cool J is kind of is like a, so it goes back to why I call him the bridge. He's kind of the guy who kind of advanced lyricism past past those guys, but it was before what Rakim did. You know, it wasn't as vast as Rakim or Kane or G Rap, but it was still very much more advanced than Mo Cass and Mel. Like L took their skill level to another level, which is like why Cool Mo D didn't like L. He kind of fit. He kind of felt like the beef really was. They say it's over the hat, but low key, he kind of felt like L was kind of trying to take his style. It was kind of biting off of him. And so that was kind of some of the reason that there was a beef between those two guys. Even though I don't think so, but, you know, let those guys tell it from that era, you know, they, they felt a certain type of way. But L took that in advance and past what they were doing, but not just yet to what Rock Hill doing, which brings me to, he's the bridge. He's from, he's the bridge from that school to what became the second coming, which will always be Rock Hill. Now, the other two guys of that second coming, the other three, I mean, the other two that make up that three can be, for me, it's G-Rap and Q. Some people are saying it's K and KRS. Those guys took it and advanced it to pretty much bring us into where we are today. Now, I'm going to always say Cube and G-Rap because I believe that the modern hip-hop, as far as lyrics, lyricists go, and subject matter and attitude, I would give it to Coogee Rap and Ice Cube, Rock Him, Coogee Rap and Ice Cube. I would give it to those three, but like I said, people might say, no, nah, it's Kane and KRS, and they're not wrong for that either. I would never argue that because it's not a wrong answer. But yeah, LL, hell yeah, LL is a great lyricist. LL is, you know, clearly one of the best to do it. Like I said, a lot of people didn't have longevity before LL. And he was one of the first rappers who actually lasted from 1984 to like 2004. So he had a long career. 10 album run with Def Jam still owns all of his music and publishing. So, you know, L is that guy. He's definitely a great lyricist. He, he should, he's top five. Anybody put him in top five, they are wrong. His influence is felt through hip hop and forever will be, man. So LL is definitely a great lyricist. But you know, once again, this is short and sweet. It's your boy, the almighty Nick Nemes, Power 7 Podcast. Peace.